Welcome to the Beyond the Veil Summit, a free online event where you'll explore the mysteries surrounding near-death experiences, mediumship, and the science of the afterlife. Share this event with your friends and family, and come join us on Facebook at The Shift Network. And now your host, Lisa Bonis. Welcome to this session of the Beyond the Veil Summit with my guest, Vanessa C. Codornia. Our topic today is Reclaiming Our Communication Beyond the Veil, Deepening Resilience, Healing, and Community Through Mediumship. Vanessa Codornio is an acclaimed psychic medium, bruja, and Latinx teacher of intuition and clinical hypnosis with a focus on healing ancestral trauma and patterns through hypnosis with over 27 years of experience in more than 10,000 individual sessions. She's the founder of the Online School of the Healing Arts. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So happy to be here today with, with you all, really. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to hearing. Uh, I know what we're going to be talking about, so let's go ahead and start sharing. But let's start at the beginning. What, what brought you to this work? I feel like I was very blessed to be... I was born into a South American family, born in Peru from a family in Argentina. So we would always say Catolico en nuestra manera, which means Catholic in our own way. And so we believed that there was communication with the hereafter. We believed that we received messages through dreams or when folks crossed over. And so from a very young age, um, I was already receiving messages, being able to speak to my family about it. So no one shut me down. The only thing that they told me is like, okay, just between us, uh, you know, entre nosotros, we'll just talk about it here. And so that kind of background really fed me and nurtured me. At one point, though, I think the thing that really moved me was at 16 when I started to receive a lot of messages. Um, and my mom blindfolded me so I couldn't see the letters of a Ouija board. And I don't recommend that you kids do this at home, but I was playing around with a Ouija board and my mom blindfolded me. So I didn't know the, the letters. And what wound up happening is that deceased people came through that I never met to share very specific messages. For example, a woman with red hair and a little boy were dripping wet as they were coming out of a river. And they kept telling my mom, take care of Willie. That was my dad's name. Take care of him. And she's like, I love him so much. And I'm like, who is this lady who's dripping wet? And I'm 16 years old um, with a little boy and they're in front of a river. And then there was an older woman dressed in very austere clothing telling my family, telling my mom um, to call Argentina and tell one of our cousins not to go to work on the third Saturday of whatever month, the specific information. And when I came out of it and took off the blindfold, obviously the Ouija board had been forgotten. My fingers were not on it because I was receiving the information directly. And my mom got up and showed me a picture that was hidden behind my father's frame with a woman with red hair and she said they used to date that was his girlfriend long before i ever met him he married someone else had a child and then died in a car accident in a river so the fact that i saw this woman that i've never met dripping wet giving a message to my father at 16 like really blew my mind and it was like okay so yes we talk about spirits and we receive messages and wow um i could really do this and how calm my mom felt and how happy my father was because he was worried that, you know, she had suffered or that maybe her spirit was wandering or lost because of the accident. But her message was, uh, I'm doing great. I'm fine. I just came through this way because that's the last time I was seen on earth, but I'm good. And so that's something that at 16 brought me into the reality that, you know, I'm an intuitive, a psychic, a medium, that this might be my life's calling, but I fought it all the way. I mean, I worked in corporate for years. Well, I did this on the side all the time. And so that was the initial moment where there was no hiding. There was no hiding. Right. Yeah. Sometimes uh, these things just sort of push their way into your life and don't leave you with much of a choice. And that's kind of how it sounded uh, for you. Now, I know that being a medium at this specific time in human history has got to be interesting to say the least uh with the pandemic going on uh, how has that changed what you're doing um it is absolutely and so for me you know i had i've been online eight years i've been doing what i do offline like 19 years and i you know i had 
international retreats going, all these things. And suddenly a lot of my clients lost their businesses, their jobs. And I just went to spirit. I went to my inner self and I said, how can I best serve? And so it changed because I was guided to show up for three months every Monday for free and hold space like a community gathering, which I didn't do now as an adult having a business. I did it when I was really young in my 20s and, and so on in person once a month. And so I started showing up every week. Then I started doing a pay what you can, um, Reiki training, energy healing, and other things. And I used to, you know, have a higher priced items and things like that. But it became imperative during this time for me to be able to make things accessible because I was receiving a lot of messages from Latinx, from uh, Black and Indigenous folks, from, from everyone across the board, really, with a lot of ancestral trauma coming up. A lot of like, I'm so afraid they're going to take me. And this is unnatural, but I know that my family uh, passed away, you know, in World War II in the concentration camps or people saying to me, you know, I know that part of my history is also slavery in the United States. And now I'm like scared, especially with everything that's happening, the pandemic and Black Lives Matter. And, you know, a lot of what's occurred in these, well, forever, but specifically this year, right, 2020. And so it changed my work in that I was like, okay, I'm just not planning as much, I'm showing up to serve. And it became imperative to hold space for community and to be able to support folks with practical tools to connect for themselves. I've always loved to do readings and I love to do, to hold space for others in that way. But I think right now during the pandemic and all the changes that society is asking of us, that we need to return to our roots. We need to reclaim what's ours. And that's why I said reclaiming, because each and every one of us has an ability to intuit, to receive, and to communicate with the other side. And so that's how it changed. Less planning, showing up in community, um, creating affordable programming so folks can come in and really listening to my community, my clients, just to what they needed. So it shifted everything, really. Yeah, we're definitely living in a, uh, a changing world and adapting is, uh, it's so very important. Uh, but I love that you brought up uh, ancestral stories because I don't know if you know this, but I, I host the Ancestral Healing Summit as well. So I'm, I'm obsessed with that topic. So if you don't mind, let's dive into that a bit. Um, you were saying that people were coming forward with their own ancestral stories, things that they might have known about in their families. Uh, what are their concerns? You, you just sort of touched on it, but let's dive in a little deeper. I'm fascinated as well. And I've had an ancestor practice that my parents passed on for over 20 years, um, you know, and so and more than that. What I found is that folks were coming up suddenly very stressed out about their finances right across the board. It doesn't matter what culture or race. Across the board, finances, of course, we have the highest level on, of unemployment. Um, the visibility, afraid of being seen, afraid of stepping out to do what we really want. And the desire to return to some ancient practices that many people of different races, different religions felt that they'd lost. And so I found a lot of Latinx people coming up and they're like, I was told that I had to go to church and that lighting candles outside of that or opening myself to spirit, you know, spirit or to nature was demonic or evil. Um, not only Latinx, but other folks came forward and they were like, I feel like I have a gift. I feel like I'm receiving messages. So there's an increase in, you know, obviously people being home. Some people are burdened because they're working and they have kids at home, so they're trying to manage it all. But I found that, um, I think I did over 200 sessions of ancestral healing, that people were making time for healing like never before, at least, you know, in my realm of what I was seeing. And the focus on breaking ancestral patterns and stories of lack, uh, ancestral stories of persecution, of uh, fear to step out and let's say starting a business or creating a new career path. Because let's face it, during the pandemic, many folks who were building, let's say I'm working mortar business or building other types of careers, find themselves now like, wow, I've just been kicked out of the tower, you know, like the tarot card, the tower. I'm, I'm reworking my, my foundations. And now I have to restart. And so what I find that they were doing is going back to the beginning and through hypnosis, healing um, the stories of overwork, right? A lot of, I'm an immigrant too. I came here when I was a year old, uh, my family, right? My mom and dad have passed now this last year actually. And their English wasn't even wonderful before they passed yet they built a business. But I've inherited that too, the overwork, overgiving, um, being too humble and not stepping into the light 
and saying, this is what I'm an expert in. This is what I do. More so like, oh, no, no, I don't do that much. It's okay. And so I've seen a lot of folks going, I need to reclaim my intuitive abilities. I need to reclaim my ability to create abundance outside of the system of actually having a job, rather creating something new. And so those are some of the areas. So they've been finances, spirituality, um, reconnecting to the positive ancestral gifts that all of us have, right? And releasing that inherited fear of, you know, like I had someone last week who said to me, I have a terror now that something's going to happen to my child. Because it doesn't make sense though. They're safe at home. I'm homeschooling. Everything is good. And we did some work and I said, you know, is there any family member who lost several children along the line of your mother's line? That's the energy that I'm getting. And she said, oh, wow. Yes. I'd never thought about it. I'd forgotten about it. And so we did some work to release that, but it hit her during a pandemic. So if any of you out there are feeling extra anxiety, right, above the normal, if you're starting to think about your grandparents or your great-grandparents or the folks who came over, because at some point or another, most of us have come over from somewhere, even if it's 400 years ago. So that's, that's kind of the stories that have been coming up. The, you know, um, loss and lack and lack of abundance and fear and false humility, not being able to step in and, and claim what could be ours, right? Right, right. Now, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, because that is uh, one of the front burner issues we're dealing with right now. Uh, you mentioned that people of, of all uh, different colors, uh, races are coming forward, uh, trying to look into this. So, for example, uh, clients who've had uh, ancestors who were slaves or ancestors who were slave owners. Um, in yes. this time of mass change, what are you seeing with regard to those topics? Absolutely. And I just got chills because it really is coming up to be healed. And I think that the work that the Shift Network is doing, and thank you for holding space for ancestral healing, Lisa, and I let you love that topic. And the work that so many of us healers are doing, and the work that community is ready to do is where we step into spaces, first maybe with ourselves. And then, and then allowing ourselves to feel the feelings of anger, of upset. So I think traditionally we've been pushed into the love and light. Love and light, love and light it, love and light it, don't attract it. And I think that what's happening right now, what I've been feeling for myself and others, we're beginning to feel that pain, right? So I'm, I'm very mixed. My grandmother was indigenous and I always felt very bad because I lost touch with that particular form of ancestry. And... What I'm coming to understand is I'm holding space in these healings and people I think are, are, are going into is that it's our time. It's everyone's time. Everyone's time to heal. Everyone's time to forgive. And everyone's time to become a true ally. I've been holding a lot of community gatherings where um, I've guided people into bringing in their well ancestors and those that need healing and then asking for forgiveness because so many of us are mixed. And it's, and it's very possible, and I've seen this in a lot of clients, that you've got slave owners and enslaved and immigrant people into the same line. And in that work, what I've seen is that holding space for forgiveness and holding space for, well, what's next? Because It doesn't feel like it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm releasing it. Okay, I'm going about my daily day, my every day. It's like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm releasing it. And now how can I show up? Is there information I can share? I don't need to march in a protest. And I can send money to help folks who have been arrested, or I can do this. And so there's so many ways I think we're being invited into true spiritual activism, but we're not going to love and light it away. And I've seen many, many Black healers stepping into the light, many Indigenous and Brown healers stepping into the light and saying, these are my practices and I'm ready to be here. And so there's, especially we see this on Instagram and other spaces where there's so many coming forward. And when I say it's our time, I don't just mean it's black and brown. It is for everyone because there's so many um, people of European heritage saying, oh, my God, I'm reclaiming my Celtic. When it comes to the Black Lives Matter, I feel that anyone who has white privilege, including myself, we need to drop into the understanding when we speak for the audience, right? Because we go, we, we, that we used to go, we for the white privileged people or people who are white. And then we also need to talk about we for folks who are black and indigenous and brown. So even when I write a post, it's becoming more aware. We can say, we need to do this. Well, wait a minute. 
we're all going through changes and yet we're not going through it the way black and brown people are going through it. They're going through it in a whole way. We can be stressed out about what's happening, right? Anybody who's lighter or has some white privilege and folks who are brown and black and have children who are out in the streets are suffering it on a whole other level. And so it's, I think, deepening our society, if we take the invitation, if we accept it, to move into compassion, to move into greater understanding, and if you will, to place ourselves in, in the feet of folks who are black and brown. And instead of defending, because that's what happens when people get scared and defense, oh no, but you know, I'm a good person. It's not about that. It's about a whole structure and a whole system. And so I think these are the elements of what we're stepping into, but I've been so happy and so proud. And for folks who are watching, I continue sharing um, brown and black healers, continue sharing allies. We need to understand that there are healers and teachers and guides of all colors and races and religions. And I know that you do that so beautifully and thank you. And that's really the time that I see that we're in. Yeah, yeah, I'm so glad that, you, that you're, uh... Uh, working this with with broader brush strokes because there are so many marginalized people that really aren't being seen just because there's just so much going on and uh, you know what comes to mind is uh, these poor kids at the border uh, the damage yes. that's being done to them I, it's just inconceivable what they're going to pass on to future generations um, and. I mean, just from my experience with ancestral healing, chances are very good that their ancestors have experienced similar storylines. So they're living out these patterns. So I know this is a huge question, but let's talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. What, what are your thoughts on what are we creating? Well, we're creating the, our own demise and for anyone who has biases or negative viewpoints of immigrants and um, negative perceptions, it's only a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So if you're saying people are criminals or people are this or people are that, now they're getting sexually abused. There's all these things happening, abuses to children and women and men. You're only going to create more pain. And so you're passing on the pain. I think that one of the ways, I mean, we need to protest, we need to speak, we need to write letters, we need to petition. And, I, and we need to continue to envision a better world. I think that that's why so many healers are being called into play. I know that um, I've always kept my classes smaller so they could be very intimate. And now with the pay what you can, I'm just opening the doors because I think that we need to be ready to receive with open arms the children who come out of those spaces. And I know that many are already situating themselves or have. And so we need to be very active about that, I feel. And thank you for bringing that up because we're perpetuating the harm and we're creating more. We're also creating more division. Um, you know, this country was based on, you know, give me your poor, give me your, your wretched masses. Give me, and like everybody who came to the United States came because um, there, was, there were issues in other countries with religious freedom, uh, et cetera. And yet that's, that's why people are coming here. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, I, it, it brings up a lot of emotion um, when you say that my family didn't go through that. At the same time, I've been stopped when crossing in from Panama or Peru, or I mean, with a Peruvian passport at the time, not from Peru because I haven't been there, uh, where people were questioning me uh, why I went, when did my parents. And, you know, that's just a minor snapshot. And I just thought, wow, this has only happened to me four times folks who are stuck at the border, folks who don't speak English. Um, and so, yeah, we're creating a lot of pain and we need to be conscious of it. We can't love and light it away. So thank you for that. And, and, and we just need to know that we are in an era of spiritual activism, however you want to paint it. I think we've been in, I mean, Starhawk was sharing about it in the seventies, right? We have a lot of uh, witches and healers who were talking about this, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, maybe longer. We need, and a lot of indigenous teachers we need to step into it. We need to speak about it. And so thank you for bringing it up. Oh, I think also that we need to, in general, I mean, by me, what I mean by we, and so I'm talking to everyone, is um, anybody who does feel called to be a healer, you know, learn your techniques, work on yourself, work on your community, offer free sessions, offer, I mean, you know, don't go into servitude, but hold space for community because we need to hear each other and see each other. 
And that's why I say that mediumship is really an opportunity as we communicate with the other side for us to grow in resilience. Our ancestors have survived so much for us to be here. So we are resilient. We're made to shift. We're made to change. You know, pivoting doesn't have to be such a thing because it's natural. The wind moves, the earth shifts, the, you know, there are changes in the elements around us and within us. We need to continue to, to change to answer the call of what is happening. Uh, I think that the pandemic and Black Lives Matter and what's happening at the border is a huge wake up call that we can't continue living lives the way we were. And now it's hitting many folks at home by losing their jobs, et cetera. We need to move for change and we need to move for it now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for addressing that really big, powerful question. And another thing that you're saying is, I think, so very important is that people who are called to this kind of work, who uh, may be afraid of stepping forward for a multitude of reasons, uh, fear of uh, ridicule, fear of uh, religious uh, um, judgment, um, just fear of being seen and i know that when i was trying to find guests for this summit it's really hard to find people who aren't white doing this work so what would you recommend i, I apologize if i said that in a clumsy way i'm just coming through the top of my head what no and i understand and they're people? there they mm -hmm. are there and they're coming out more and i can send some people your way um the thing is that people have been doing this, you know, like I said, I've been doing this 27 years, only eight years online. All that I was just in community. I was scared. People are afraid to be judged. People are afraid to be demonized. And the thing is that because we're all, it's, it's, it's this deep opportunity to channel our ancient wisdom, right? Um, but they are there. It's just that we may not be aware of them. I can say that during the pandemic, my following changed. My following has always been diverse. Now I can say that it's a huge, huge following of Latinx. And so what I'm seeing is a lot of 20 year olds and 30 year olds who are benefiting, right? From, they call me the OG Bruja, so the old gangsta Bruja, right? They're like, you've been here before us. And so what we're seeing is that mm, people who are maybe over 40, we're taught to just do it quietly in their community. I was talking about ancestral patterns of humility before, right? Um, ancestral patterns of you train that person who then goes to get the book deal, right? You train the person then who go get, who's in front of Hay House and millions of people around the world. But a lot of indigenous and black and Latinx and also uh, brown and, and in many different cultures, Aboriginal cultures, Aboriginal cultures, um, we were the ones who were training people who knew people and had the connections to go get the book deals. Um, I know lots of people who don't really practice. Like I do, I've been doing 30 sessions a week, right? Now I'm trying to rest. I know people don't really do the work, but have the training and the connections and then can have access, right? And so I would say, even for me, growing up in this country as a Latina, as a Latinx, it took a lot, like think about it, 27 years and I'm here in the Shift Network. I'm now fully coming into my abilities to be public. The great thing is that the 20 and 30 year olds were coming before us, they're watching us. I got 10 messages this morning that said to me, um, Brujita, Maestra Brujita, like my, my witchy teacher, I love you. Please take care of yourself, you're doing so much. And so the next generation is watching us. So we can find them, I'll actually forward some names to you. There's many who are stepping up now and reclaiming and healing. And we're going to be seeing more and more and more. Um, but just remember too, Lisa, that the history of what a lot of us, we can talk about this with the Celtic, Aboriginal, we can talk about this with indigenous and black and African. What we've seen is that traditionally through ancestral stories that we've been taught that this is demonic, this is bad, and that we're not evolved or that we're, um, animalistic or um, that we're not really with the true God. That was the old thing. And then folks came in, were like, oh my God, how cool. Let me have this dream catcher and I'm going to mass produce it. And they had the means and let me, oh, wow, this is the way you're cleansing with sage or with the egg. Like I grew up having limpias with the egg or you bless it and then I clear myself, you crack it, you look at it. Um, people traveling to Mexico, traveling to Latin America, bringing the techniques, right? 
And you see this everywhere with Mexican restaurants and other restaurants owned by primarily people who have money and are have succeeded, who tend to be not that Latinos and Black and others don't succeed, but they tend to be, right? Mostly white or white privileged. And so they are here. We are rising. Um, there's more and more coming out every day. And um, yes, that's real. And that's what's happened. We've been taught and programmed to hide. We've been told that our practices weren't good enough. We've been, but then we see them mass marketed, right? We've been told. And, and to that end, I wanted to share that I just brought, I just changed my name to the Biz Bruja in the last year. I was running around with the name of the Urban Priestess for 15, 16 years. And to be frank, I just never thought that I would have as diverse as an audience if I called myself a Bruja, which I am. Huh. Interesting. That's. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you stepped uh, stepped into that because, as you know, words have power. So obviously, uh, the power behind those words are, you know, they're having a ripple effect. So yeah. And and thank you for for what you were saying about the people who are beginning to step into it. Maybe it is just the younger generation who doesn't have all that that training <laughs> that the older folks have. So, so yeah, uh, have an online presence so that you can be found. Now that's, I know this isn't necessarily what we are going to talk about today, but I wanna mention that you actually do help people to to create their businesses, don't you? To, to step into their roles? I do. So what happened was, you know, I, I know that for so many healers, especially Latinx and black and brown, but it, it extends, right? Um, we just do what we do naturally, right? We show up, we help people, we read people, we hold space, we do a cleansing, we do a clearing, and we feel that we're doing this for community. So we don't necessarily see our work as a business. I know that for me, I didn't. Nowadays, things are changing. We're 25 year olds, we're like, I'm getting my LLC, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and you know, congrats. Um, for us, it took a longer road, anybody over 40, 45, because it was something connected to the divine. It was something connected to, this is a gift. As I've grown, I've realized I wasn't meant to work in corporate. I've realized that I was pulling myself too far apart, you know, into a double life where it was like corporate and then run to the circles and do the sessions. So the way they support people is to connect to the power of their intuition, to connect to their ancestral practices that are already within them. Sometimes we think, well, I don't remember my, you know, Mayan ancestral uh, heritage or my Celtic, or I've lost it. But the ancestors have always said to me over and over again, the spirits of those who've crossed over have said to me, well, you don't have to get that practice because we live in your blood and your bone and your skin and your heart. If we allow ourselves to drop in and breathe, we can bring this through. And so I support people in reconnecting to that and clearing away with hypnosis anything that no longer serves. And then we sit down and we build a business based on your spirits true calling and mission, not on the ego, right? Because the ego can be like, oh my God, it's trendy. Everybody's doing crystals and everybody's doing that. I'm going to do it too. And, you know, creating a business is work. Showing up consistently in social media is work. I, I show up like every day, you know, and I like it because I don't see it as marketing. I see it as sharing. I see it as connecting to my community. And so part of the work that I do is helping people change the mindsets around what they think business is. So it's more like, well, do you want to succeed and hold space for others? And you've got to take care for your, of yourself. And I think that's part of the Latinx push and the push in general where we're like, okay, so maybe we felt like we've been overlooked all these years. Now we're going to create our own business and we're going to honor ourselves because that's how the world is going to honor us. And so that's the sacred work that I do as well is connect to the intuition, support people through hearing from the people from the other side and their ancestors, and then flowing more deeply into showing up for themselves. You know, if we continue to show up for ourselves, and I'm talking to everyone, and specifically, let's say, Latinx and Black and Brown Indigenous folks, and I'm also speaking to white people who are like, or white privileged folks who are also like, oh, I feel a call to the Celtic, but it's been, you know, 500 years since I've been in, in the United States. It's our time. We need to understand each other. We need to bring this forward. And creating your business to support yourself is such a deep honoring, not only of those who've crossed over, a deep honoring of our ancestors who gave away the work. And maybe back then they were taken care of, right? Because somebody would bring over a goat or bring over loaves of bread for the week when they got worked on by the bruja, local curandero, or the shaman or the healer. 
Now we've got to do it through building protections and LLCs and trademarks. And so we're tapping into that ancient knowledge and just bringing it to the modern world. And, and I love that work because I love to see people thrive and what they were born to do. As someone who suffered many years not doing this full time, because I did, I was very, like I said, duality, like I have this dual life, um, and not, fa- not knowing how it would work out, uh, it brings me great pleasure to support people into being whole, mind, body, spirit, that it can include their sacred work. Yeah. I am so grateful that you exist because somebody needs to help people who are trying to break through it. We are in such a time of transition. It's time to step forward into your power. The world is waiting for you. There's plenty to go around. There's no competition. Wow. I, thank you. Thank you. Um, now, I, I, we're, I'm watching the clock here. I want to make sure uh, that we allow time. You are going to lead us in a practice. But before we do that, I want to ask you, because this is the Beyond the Veil Summit, in your words, in your experience, uh, what is the veil? Mm, I love that question. Uh, the veil is a veil of forgetfulness that we all incarnate into. You know, our souls are... Our souls are just multidimensional, have traveled so many journeys. Our souls are deep, are wide, are expansive, are beautiful, and hold so much wisdom. And then we incarnate to continue learning. When we incarnate, it's almost like we need to have a little bit of a forgetfulness uh, so we can focus in and really learn the lessons that our spirit and our soul needs to learn here. Because if we didn't need to learn here, we wouldn't be here. We would just be a spirit chilling on, you know, on the clouds going, hey, girl, I got you. Um, Instead, we're here incarnated. And so the veil to me is that energy that we can call it a false reality. We could call it a mindset. We could call it a perspective. But it's this kind of energy that we need to envelop ourselves in order to fully incarnate and be here in the world so we can do the things that we're supposed to do. And interestingly, the, ga- the, the, the goal as we evolve in this life, right? And so we're in the veil. And some of us, the veil is very thin, as they say, the veil is thin. And we can see, like I've been seeing my grandparents and some little and receiving messages. Um, and some are, because of the pandemic and Black Lives Matter, they're just like waking up so fast. Like they're like, oh my God, I got this message. And, you know, oh my God, energy is real. And so many people are waking up because it's that time where we're supposed to remember. And that's why the veil is getting thinner. So if people are, are experiencing this across the board, because we're supposed to remember while being fully embodied in the present moment, that we're more than what we seem and that we're here to reclaim. And remembering that can create more hope and remind us that we're strong and can remind us that we have accessibility to those on the other side. And so it's a little bit of a long one, but it, was, it felt like it was really flowing through. No, that, that, was, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's do our practice. Yes. And so this is a practice that many of you may have already seen. And I invite you to allow yourselves to flow with it because I meet so many folks every day who are like, oh, I know about that. Oh, I know about that. Oh, I know about that. But I really am like, and are you doing it? So it's not so much about the knowing of the thing. It is, are we embodying it? And so I want to invite us briefly into going into our body for a moment because sometimes we mystify mediumship and spiritual world and, and connecting with our ancestors as it's like the stuff everybody else does or the stuff that, you know, medium who's been doing it 27 years. We're receiving information constantly every day. It's important for us to know how we receive, right? Because some of us hear, some of us feel, some of us sense, some of us know. And because it becomes so common for us, we overlook the messages that we're getting from our higher selves, from our ancestors, from those who've crossed over. So I want to invite us to allow our eyes to gently close and feeling our feet on the ground, our booty in the seat, allowing ourselves to really be present, breathing in love and truth into our heart. If it helps to put a hand, right hand over your heart, please do so. As we allow ourselves to just notice our breath going in and going out. Just breathing in this knowing that we're here at this time. Because we wanted to be here. As much as the difficulties and challenges and the unknown has risen up for all of us. 
that we are the answer to our ancestors' prayers, that there are so many on the other side of cross, and yet we're here. So with every breath in, allowing yourself to be present, with every exhalation, releasing even more, we allow ourselves to just drop into our breath, knowing that whenever we feel scattered or um, taken away from our center, that we can just return with the hand of our heart, breathing into our heart space. Now I invite you to call in your higher self, your deepest knowing, to call in your well ancestors and those that are healing themselves on the other side. And I'm going to do it out loud. For everyone who is watching and present, I ask that our highest, deepest knowing come forth. I ask that our well ancestors and those that are working to heal on the other side arrive. I ask that we be guided. I ask that in manageable, graceful, supportive ways, we receive the wisdom that we need personally and as a collective to find our way through this unknown time and that we rise in our integrity and that we align our spirit with our actual actions, that walking our talk is more important than ever before. We allow ourselves to drop into this breathing in and out, into the sacred prayer that we call out for spirit, for our person, personal selves and our collective, for our ancestors who've walked before us. As we breathe into the space, asking those who've crossed over for you, is there anything that I need to know right now so I can better manage these times for myself and my family? Is there anything that I need to know right now so I can better manage what I'm dealing with right now in my family? Allowing ourselves to receive. And then asking, is there anything that those who've crossed on the other side, any message that they have for me at this time, any message that those who've crossed over at the other side may have and taking a deep breath in. And allowing ourselves to receive that. And then asking them, is there anything that they would like for us to do for them, to celebrate them, knowing that death does not end our connection, our love, our community with those who've crossed. They want us to light a candle or do an extra dance for them or toast to them. Do they want us to place a picture in a place where the family will see them? We allow ourselves to just breathe in, asking those who've crossed over. <sighs> And gently giving thanks. Knowing that tears may be normal. Giving thanks to them, to your higher self, to your guides, to your ancestors, to your well ancestors, to those who walked before you, and thanking any message that has come through now, knowing that you are going to stay aware. Your messages may come through dreams, may come through your daily life giving thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. May you go in peace. So it is, so it shall be. Ashe, aho, and amen. And as we gently return, and I got emotional because of course I received messages. And I wanted to just take the moment to do this because sometimes it could seem so big and so out there. But just remember that we were born with what we need. We have our heart, we have our breath, we have our bodies, our spirits that are asking to be more and more embodied. It can be natural to try to leave your body a little bit because we're scared, we're worried. At the same time, our survival, our healing depends on us allowing ourselves to be in our body. And so returning to our bodies, returning to our practices and making time for them. And even those three, four, those three minutes, those four minutes, um, 
can allow us to connect with those who've crossed and allow us to receive guidance for our lives from those who have wisdom throughout time. So thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for that. That was very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Now, I want to ask, um, as a result of, of doing this practice, I know that these are very common questions from people who, who are new to this kind of work. Either nothing came through, what do I do? Or something came through, how do I know I'm not making it up? Right, and those are great questions. It's important for us to know that we're kind of learning to have a habit of intuition, right? Which is weird because we're all born intuitive. We're all born um, sending and receiving information. That's why sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, I need to get away from the masses of people because they could feel the energy. And so we all have our unique way. And so we are learning. So it's patience is really important. This is not something that our mind is going to do for us, right? Yes, our mind is going to breathe and say the words of, I ask my guides to be present, my ancestors. And so, one, be patient. Two, allow yourself to be open to receiving information in different ways. Um, not all of us hear, not all of us see, as I was saying before. You may go to sleep and suddenly feel a presence of love and, oh my God, I felt like my grandmother was me. That was a message, right? Or I have a, my parents both passed in the last year and I have a sibling who doesn't believe very much in the communication. And there's never been a lot of butterflies in my mom's garden, never. And he took care of her as she was ill and before she passed. And he went out there and at one point he was surrounded by butterflies. Just, he said there were at least 80 and they were all around me. And so it's, it's, it's out of the ordinary, the things that are a little out of the ordinary. You may also receive an energy of peace and go, is this real? What is this? Maybe I'm meditating. Please keep in mind that some people go off to the mountains, <laughs> to Tibet and other mountains in the United States and around the world to try to find peace when they meditate. So finding peace when we go in is not as typical as we think. Um, for some, it's harder. For others, it's easier. If you're going in and you're like, I'm not getting a word or a message, but I feel really peaceful, that can be that message of saying it's all good. It's all good. The part about making it up, I would invite you to, if you do this practice, to maybe write down what you get. Even if you're like, I just feel good, right? I feel really grounded. Oh, the rest of my day went really well. So it may not be something tangible like a word or a message or a vision, but it affected you somehow. It made your life better somehow. It allowed you show, to show up with better energy. The how do I know that I'm not making it up? You know, imagination and intuition often overlaps. A lot of folks are like, oh, I have a wild imagination. Could be their intuition speaking to them. A lot of people, I don't know if it was uh, Thomas Edison who used to take naps when he had an issue or a problem they couldn't solve in his uh, inventions. And when he slept, he got the answers. Could we say it's his imagination? It's his intuition. Sometimes they're one and the same. Sometimes they're one and the same. The way I would say you would be able to tell the difference is that there's something consistent about intuition. And imagination could be just for the moment. And you're like, oh, this would be a great idea to do this. And then you never do it. And it's okay. Oh, it would be really wonderful if I was this. And you know, I listen to music videos sometimes and I'm the star in the music video and I'm there like dancing and doing my thing. Um, that's not really something that I would really want to do. Uh, it's my imagination. And, but it's a playful way for me to like really stress. But when I get a message of all is well, go take a walk. There's a different quality to it. So the more that you show up, you're going to be able to tell the difference between just your imagination of, oh, it would be fun to do this. And what if to this message, it's very specific. Um, someone said to me the other day, Vanessa, I keep saying my mother and my grandmother are crossed over. How, you know, how do I know that it's not that I don't want it so badly? I'm like, I know tons of people who really want to receive messages from people who crossed over and they want it so badly and they're not getting it. And no amount of imagination is giving it to them. And so it's going to take time and allow yourself patience, allow yourself to show up and allow yourself to, it's, you know, we're having a relationship. We may stop and do those three minutes or four minutes, but we're having a relationship with life. We're having a relationship with spirit. We're always in relationship, even if we're overwhelmed with work and things to do. And so just be patient and observe, allow yourself to go into that witness space where we observe what is rather than trying to analyze it, to weigh it, and give it some time. 
All right. Thank you so much for that helpful advice. Uh, I want to make sure before we go any further that I mention your website. Uh, it's thebizbruja.com. That's three words, not just bizbruja, but the three words, no spaces. And on that site, they can find a link to uh, your School of Healing Arts and also to your podcast. And is that yeah. the best way for them to contact you through this website? Absolutely. And there's a lot of information. So take it slow. And, you know, part of my own breaking my ancestral patterns of invisibility and just serving rather than stepping into the light and saying, well, this is what I do. Um, that website has a lot of information on it and it has the ancestral information, the trainings and Reiki and intuition and reclaiming our sacred gifts. So thank you. And also Instagram, right? The Biz Bruja. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Vanessa. Is there anything that we've left out, anything still brewing in your mind that you want to make sure that we bring up before we close? Mm. A strong thing that comes through is, which I said earlier, just is really important to get clear. We haven't, you know, even an ancestral pattern is even the fear of connecting with those on the other side. Uh, um, an ancestral trauma can even be afraid of our own intuition. And I just want to, again, reinstate to reaffirm that it's natural, that we've always had it, that no one can give it to you. No teacher can give it to you. We can just give you tools. We can share a story. We can support you and make it, you know, create safe space for you, like the Shift Network and this conference, et cetera, and this conversation. But you really do have it and just be patient. and. And know that when we light a candle for those who've crossed over, know that when we, if like my mom loved flowers, so do I, but I'll do a flower that she loved, that they are receiving it and that they're being remembered and that it does mean a lot to them and it supports us in our healing. So thank you. Thank you for this space. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you so much, Lisa, on the Shift Network. Well, thank you. Back at you. We've been talking with Vanessa Cadorniu. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this conversation in the Beyond the Veil Summit. Thank you for joining us for the Beyond the Veil Summit, brought to you by the Shift Network. To learn more, visit beyondtheveilsummit.com. To join our global community of people awakening to their divine humanity and taking inspired action, visit theshiftnetwork.com. Thank you again for gathering with us and for sharing this healing path with your friends and family.